Welcome back to Houston Life. It is time for our H Town sit down. Here's a look at today's guest. Bourbon, America's native spirit. A drink many enjoy, but for Samara B. Davis, it's her favorite. She started the Black Bourbon Society after George Floyd's death and the calls for racial justice. Samara saw a lack of diversity in the spirit industry, wanted to bridge the gap between industry and African American bourbon enthusiasts. She's partnered up with Jim Beam for a national bourbon tour, and it's stopping in Houston this week. The Open Door Tour is spotlighting Black-owned bars and restaurants here in town, celebrating culture and cocktails. And Samara B. Davis joins us now, the founder of the Black Bourbon Society. I had no idea this organi organization existed. Why was there a need for this, Samara? You know, when I started this six years ago, I realized it just wasn't a lot of diversity and inclusion in it. I was looking for a society of folks to drink bourbon with, and I didn't find anybody who looked like me. So I decided to create my own society. And why do you think that is? Like, why was there this gap that existed when it seems like everybody can enjoy, you know, people come together at a bar or over a drink, right? It's, it's one of the ways we connect with other people, right? right? So why did this gap exist, you think? I just think it's gone back to like the stereotype and like the, the old version of what bourbon is. It's like this, you know, middle-aged white male drink that comes from Kentucky, comes from the country, from the South, but not realizing that bourbon is America's spirit and everybody drinks it. So when I created Black Bourbon Society, there was this explosion of different groups popping up. There was Women Who Whiskey, Black Bourbon Society, other groups starting to pop up saying like, hey, we're here and we want to be included in the good stuff. And the good stuff. Well, yeah. it's super cool. And describe to our viewers what exactly is the Black Bourbon Society? What is the purpose of this organization? So the society is, again, it's it's a group, it's a social organization of about 30,000 members who all get together from across the country. We're learning about spirits, we're drinking spirits together, and we have a heavy emphasis on av advocacy for diversity and inclusion. So, you know, beyond just being a social group, I'm also advocating and working with the brands behind the scenes on how they can make their marketing and their advertising more um, more inclusive um, for diverse audiences. It's a great idea. Uh, let's talk about Houston being one of the stops on your tour. Mm -hmm. Why was Houston selected for this tour and what happens on the tour? Because I understand that you are also working with right. local bars. So this is a five city tour and we've been to Oakland, we've been to Orlando, Charlotte, now we're here in Houston. And again, yes, this is support black owned bars and restaurants, but Houston in particularly, because we've got such a large membership base here, we've got tons of fans and followers of Black Bourbon Society, and they requested that we come and that we bring this tour here. 30,000 members and growing. Can anyone be a member? Absolutely. As long as you believe in our mission of inclusion, you're a member of Black Bourbon Society. And where do you see this organization growing? You said you're five or six years in. Right. Where do you see the organization five years from now? Five years from now, we'll still be an active organization of, you know, advocates and bourbon drinkers, connoisseurs, because we're all professional drinkers by then. Um, <laughs> but then also the advocacy work that we do will just become stronger. There will be more national campaigns like this one that we have with Jim Beam. We're working with more brands and really being able to touch more audiences across the country. Well, I think it's a super cool idea. And uh, I just realized we don't have any bourbon Samara, like, we don't have glasses of bourbon right now. You thought I came empty-handed? Well, okay, don't worry. Courtney, I think, is holding down the bourbon for it at this point. Uh, Courtney, we cannot talk about the Black Bourbon Society and not mix or pour some cocktails, some bourbon. So tell us who you got. You're there with our local bartender. That's right. We're in the right spot. Uh, I'm joined now by Devin Desertel. He's the operations manager at Urban Social, as well as a bartender. It's great to see you. Welcome great to, to see you. Life. Thank you, you for having me. You guys are located on, on Richmond, right? Yes, ma'am, we are. It's a great spot in town. Okay, and so bourbon is truly having a moment. I like to say that. My husband's like, well, the moment's been going on for a couple years, Courtney. Right. Um, but if you're new to it, I love this classic taste take on a bourbon drink, which right. is a highball. I think my grandfather drank this right. back in the I'm day. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. And a highball is just simple ingredients, right? Exactly. Very simple ingredients. You could definitely do this at home. So. All right. Well, let's get started, Devin. What do let's we do start it. with? Sorry. Excuse no, me. No, no, so, no. That's okay. It's on wheels. No worries. Gotcha. So we definitely just have our Jim 
Moonbeam Black Bourbon here today. Okay. And then we have some Firewall Bitters, a little pineapple juice, and ginger beer to top it all off. Okay, all right. good ginger beer. So this should sure. also be made as a mocktail, I guess, if you didn't want to add the bourbon, right? You could, most definitely. Ginger beer, pineapple juice always makes a fun party, okay. for sure. Okay, all right, yeah. get started. What do we need to do? So what we're going to do here is just add our ice here in a cup. Excuse me. No problem. All right, so we got our ice. We're going to start off with our bourbon. We're going to do about an ounce and a half. Okay. Here in this cup, use a jigger. All righty. And no shaker, I see. We're going to No shaker, we're just right? going to stir. Okay. Keep it very easy today. I like that. All righty. So then we're going to do a few dashes of these fire water bitters here. About six dashes is good. Okay, not just regular bitters. This is almost like a cinnamon in my gut. Yeah, it has oh, a spice okay. to it for sure. Okay. Most definitely. So then we have an ounce and a half equal part bourbon, equal part pineapple juice that we're going to add here on top. Nice. And before we add our ginger beer in, we're going to give it a nice little stir. So you can use your spoon that you have at home. Here I have this fancy one. Stir for about six seconds. Get all those ingredients mixed in. You don't want to bruise the drink, right? We're exactly. just stirring nicely. It's exactly. exactly. You can bruise a drink. Exactly, especially when that. you shake it and do all the other stuff that some cocktails do require. Okay. So then from there, again, it's very easy. We're just going to top it off with some ginger beer. That should be good right about there. And then we're good to go. That's it? That's it. That's now, you're, it. you have a classic highball glass. It doesn't do. matter, right? I do. It doesn't. It has the same taste, but this is this is a little more official. All right. Well, cheers to you. I'm going to take a little sure. sippers. We're going to invite Shamara and, and Derek back in. All right, while well, you all sip too, uh, that looks delicious. Again, yes. I'm just a bit jealous here, Devin. Very refreshing. <laughs> I guess I should have made a couple more, right? <laughs> it's okay, it's well, okay. We have the ingredients. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about the open door tour because right. this is happening tomorrow through Saturday. So if viewers want to go out and experience it, uh, there are a few stops along the way. Absolutely. Tomorrow we'll have an industry only event at Urban Social. Uh, so that'll be just for bartenders and hospitality and um, professionals. We'll be talking all about how to make the perfect highball with them. And how to not bruise it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then we'll have a dinner at 5 Central on Thursday evening, and that's going to be more of a sit-down dinner with cocktails, Jim Beam cocktails, and a conversation about how we can uh, support Black-owned businesses uh, in, like, using our financial support, our social capital, all of that, so it'll be more of a cocktails and conversation. Then it gets fun. Friday evening, we're doing a happy hour at 13 from four to eight. And then on Saturday, we're doing a day party, which is not during the day because it's too hot. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our party doesn't start until five, but it will be at 5015. And That's we'll have Jim Beam games, we'll have slushies featuring Jim Beam Black, we'll have cocktails, we'll have a battle of the DJs. It's going to be an all-out party the entire weekend. Okay, it sounds like it. Well, Samara, Devin, thank you so much for thank stopping you. by. Yes. Super cool. Cheers, Courtney, so. drink up. I'm, I'm drinking up. I'm belly up to the bar. <laughs> I just want to say, bourbon and chicken go better than bubbles and chicken. Yes. Okay, Ooh, I like it. Okay. <laughs> Those are fighting words, everybody. We have some extra chicken <laughs> over there as well. Hey, by the way, right now on HoustonLife.tv, we do have a link to the events hosted by Black Bourbon Society happening this week. You can find them by clicking on the scene on Houston Life section. Thanks again to you both, Samara Thank and Devin. You. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you.